Statistics says the period saw hospitality firms bounce back from lockdowns as restrictions were lifted. Economist Simon French from Panmu Gordon says it's more positive data. I think it means we're in the throes of a very decent economic recovery. We expect the economy to get back to its pre-pandemic levels by the end of the year, which will be only two years after the pandemic started. That might sound like a long time, but Mm. normally it takes more than three years for the UK economy to recover from a, a recession. MPs are calling on the government to review security of contractors at UK embassies following the arrest of an employee at the one in Berlin. The 57-year-old British national was detained on suspicion of spying for Russia. He was reportedly a security guard at the embassy. New Zealand says it doesn't plan to reopen its borders to international travellers until early next year. The country's completely stamped out coronavirus, achieved in part by closing borders to those who aren't residents or citizens. A breast cancer drug, which was rejected for routine use on the NHS earlier this year, has now been recommended by health officials. A discount has been agreed with the manufacturer of Abamasislib following concerns about the cost. A charity says it means thousands of women might now have precious extra months with their loved ones. In the city, the FTSE 100 is just reopening at 72.20 after closing up 59 points yesterday. The pound buys $1.38 and €1.18. And the weather, most parts staying dry with sunny spells. Some rain for parts of southern England for a time and northwestern parts of the UK will turn windier with some heavy showers, a high of 23 degrees. From Global's newsroom, I'm Simon Conway. The Admiral and Mrs... This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Call the commissioner. Put your calls to Cressida Dick now. 0345 6060 973. This is LBC. It is indeed LBC, it is indeed Call the Commissioner, and it is two minutes after eight on Thursday, August the 12th. And before I put the first call, thank you. Well, obviously, I must welcome the Commissioner. Thank you for coming Morning. by. Obviously, very busy news agenda, possibly added to by events within the last 24 hours. I don't know how much you can tell us. The headlines that a UK embassy spy has sold terror intelligence to Russia. What involvement has the Metropolitan Police had in that? How concerned should we be for national security? Um, we have been involved for a number of months uh, in the Met. Uh, I think it's a a very good example of international co-working. We've been working closely, of course, with the German authorities, the BKA, uh, and the prosecutors, and, of course, with the uh, the UK government. And as you say, somebody has been arrested, uh, suspected of involvement in what they call intelligence agent activity. Uh, We will continue to work closely with them uh, and uh, through the next steps. Uh, And, of course, if if this person is uh, charged, we will support uh, any trial. Uh, wherever that may be. Uh, Currently, but, Commission, it looks like German jurisdiction will be handling well, this Well, uh, absolutely. At the moment, the Germans m- are most certainly uh, handling it. As you've seen, the German prosecutor has, has spoken out. Uh, the man was arrested in Potsdam in Germany, uh, and he's in custody in Germany. Um, it would be wrong for me to speculate about what, what might happen next. Obviously, uh, he, he, there is an investigation uh, that needs to continue. But in terms of you know, how concerned should we be, um, well, I'm not the expert, but what I can say is these things are, are thankfully very rare. Um, and yeah, as I say, it shows great international cooperation. Uh, it's great that this person has been arrested. How many months were your men and women who were serving you uh, working on this? Uh, a number of months. Six? I'm not going to give you a figure. A number of months. How high a level of intelligence did this man have access to? Uh, I can't comment on that, I'm afraid. Let's go to the questions. Thank you for that anyway. First up, uh, Darren in Chigwell. Darren, your question to the Commissioner. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning, Dan Christa. Good I attended morning, the Wembley Euro 2020 final. There was a notable lack of police, and surprisingly, there was no police cordon set up around the stadium perimeter to stop those who didn't have a ticket from getting anywhere near the stadium and concourse area. Why was this, and how did you allow such a high-profile event to send into total violence and chaos? Commissioner. 
Well, Darren, first of all, I'm sorry if you had an unpleasant experience um, at Wembley. Uh, I know many people did. Um, it's worth saying that uh, the Euro tournament was uh, mostly very safe and a very happy uh, series of events. Um, on that night uh, and in that afternoon, we saw appalling scenes of violence, of yobbery, uh, drunkenness, um, people who, as you know, were determined to force their way uh, into Wembley. Uh, we, the police, didn't just have difficulties there. We also had uh, difficulties, to say the least, in Trafalgar Square, uh, where many thousands of people um, were in what I would describe pretty much as a pitched battle with police officers who were trying to prevent uh, a, a tragedy, perhaps, where they were f trying to force their way into the fan zone. Uh, so it was, you know, scenes that nobody wants to see in this country. Uh, sadly... Uh, both violence and drunkenness are still associated on occasion um, with, with football. We have made, um, I think we made 56 arrests that day. We've made 16 since. There are many more to follow. We've been putting images out into the public domain, as you know. Thank you to people who have identified them because people have been identifying them really, really quickly. Um, but I hated seeing those images. I don't want to comment too much on exactly what happened for two reasons. Uh, well, the main reason is I've commissioned a review in the police. And as you may know, uh, there's a review um, by the, uh, uh, the FA, or rather they have commissioned an independent review. And obviously we will work uh, alongside and with Dame Louise Casey as she does that. So we will find out the exact details uh, then. I would point out that um, this was unique circumstances, you know, 55 years since uh, England have been in a final. It was in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, as you will know, the ticketing arrangements were different. There were the lateral flow tests. The perimeter that you refer to, if you like, was a long way from where it would normally have been. And that changed a lot of things. Why? I'm why, sorry. Was it, why was the perimeter not where it might have been? Because of the digital ticketing, which was being done away from the normal gates and the lateral flow test, uh, or, you know, the proof of the, the, the proof that was required. Is it correct that 300 so, odd officers were initially deployed? I think we had uh, nearly 400 in the morning and l more later on. 400 uh, for a, yeah. a, a game with 60,000 people, you deploy 400 officers. So if you, I don't know how often you go to Wembley, um, uh, at Nick. It, right, yeah, we're very different. I mean, I think it is worth pointing out, I'm sorry to go on about this, but uh, it is football which is associated but with the sort of violence. There's been a catastrophic but, failure of intelligence here, hasn't there? Because people were talking about what's, and I didn't even know this expression, the Wembley jib, and jibbing is where you gain access to a football stadium without paying tickets. This was alive on social media for several days prior to the game. I, I, I understand that policing was the same as it had been at other matches, this was a final. Surely you should have learned from what was seen at the Scotland game, but you didn't. There was, as you've said, widespread drunkenness, drug-taking, robbery, and you're quoted as saying, I'm very proud of my officers. Well, I am, actually, because uh, the people who were there uh, did... Uh, come under sustained abuse and assault uh, and they did protect hundreds and thousands of people and they did stop despite the you know the thing I deeply regret that, amongst others that people did get into the ground they stopped a far 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 worse tragedy by showing great courage and bravery of course one of the things we need to look at was you know, is, intelligence. is what Looking back with hindsight is always easy, but course, aiming off for that, studio, of course. I'm not one of the brave men and women. Uh, but aim off for that. We need, we need to look at what did we know and what could we have known that would have uh, shown that people were going to arrive as they did, as early did, as they did, did start drinking. The as, jib? I've, I haven't heard the word jib, but I know that people try to get into Wembley sometimes. I absolutely do. I haven't heard the word jib. No, None I haven't. senior officers have reported back, Mom, we better tell you they were jibbing. No one said that to you. That's not a phrase we use, no, but we do know that people try to get into it, try to get into Wembley. We also know that it is now quite a challenging area to police. And one of the things, I don't know, Darren, what happened to you, but one of the things that did happen there was that you had large numbers of, I mean, I don't want to call them fans, but very aggressive, very drunk, very early, able to drink in the area excessively people who were mixed up with children, with people in prams, uh, with, you know, families. For a police officer faced with that, what you actually want to do when you see a crowd of drunken yobs is to shift them, if you possibly can. And you go in and do that very firmly. You can't do that down some steps with right. a, a, a lot of families in prams. So it was a challenging situation but rest assured we are a professional organization 
maybe little comfort to you, Darren, I don't know. We're, we're a professional organisation. That means we learn. We will be honest with ourselves, we'll be hard yes. on ourselves, and we will uh, see whether there are lessons for the future. I'm sure there will be for uh, us and the FA. And lastly on this, the Prime Minister said he was disappointed, and the Business Secretary, Kwesi Kwarteng, told me, I think it was a bad job. It was a bad job. They're right, aren't they? That was a bad job. The last thing I would say is security and safety at uh, grounds like Wembley is a joint enterprise between the, the organiser, in this case, the government, DCMS, uh, the UEFA, the FA, Wembley Limited, the local authority and the police. Right. We all need to examine ourselves and we will. Thanks for the call, Darren. Look after yourself. Josh in Barnet, you're through to the Commissioner. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, good morning. Good morning, uh, Josh. When it's due to rebellion, blocking roads and preventing ambulances and other emergency services, <coughs> hearing they're going to have more protests scheduled later this month, what are you going to use to stop them blocking the emergency services? If... With, you know, with everything that's been going on. Extinction Rebellion are coming back. What are the plans, Commissioner? So firstly, I am, and I suspect I speak for many, many Londoners, very disappointed that Extinction Rebellion have announced that they're going to spend perhaps two weeks uh, in London. Uh, we know what they've done in the past and they've made it clear publicly what they may wish to do this time. Uh, I don't think uh, London supports, They may many people may be very interested in the cause, I don't think London supports hugely disruptive uh, protests which um, cause you know people not to be able to go around their normal business at all and the fact that they've chosen to do it uh, over the August bank holiday which for us is always our peak weekend of the year uh, is extremely frustrating frankly having said that uh, you will maybe have observed um, that uh, in terms of their last protest we took some very good preemptive action and we were able to uh, go in, into a warehouse and remove a huge amount of materials which they were obviously using likely to use to uh, form uh, constructions that would uh, be very difficult to take down and take ages to take down. We stopped them in one case causing damage. We stopped them in another case uh, putting manure on the road. Now, whoever turns up, I'm not suggesting it'll be exactly the same people, of course not, but whoever turns up next time, they will be fet, met with a fair, lawful, and we have to stick within the law, but firm, and where we possibly can be, preemptive response. They've indicated they are interested in the City of London. I want to reassure you, that we work incredibly closely with our colleagues in the City of London Police and it will be a joint operation. And we will seek to balance people's rights. People have the right to assemble. They have the right to express themselves. They have the right uh, to cause you know, a reasonable amount of disruption in that, it is clear. However, unreasonable you disruption... disruption. You can cause disruption. A, a, a number of cases when have did indicated the that... disruption to be caused? Uh, it's not... Uh, look, uh, if you look at the it's case law, if you look at the case law, Nick, you can see that it is... It, it is to, it is to be expected in a in a in an free in an assembly that there will be some small amount of disruption and the courts support that what level of conversations do you and your colleagues have with extinction rebellion prior to demonstrations uh, we always seek with all protesters and demonstrators to, to uh, form as a strong and clear a line of communication as possible uh, extinction rebellion do speak to us i have to say that on many occasions they have been um i would say disingenuous uh, they certainly don't seem in control of their, their colleagues uh, and often what they say turns out not to be true on this occasion uh, as far as i am aware they have not spoken to us directly at all despite many many attempts by us so i would ask them uh, to speak to us all right uh, and on that subject, you once spoke about getting new tougher tactics that would allow the men and women serving under you to take more preemptive action. Have you had those? Has there been the change? Well, I think the last. So the tactics that we used last time, with uh, you know better, what I would describe as better, albeit it's sometimes very hard to get information and intelligence, uh, was a very good example. Uh, we okay. now have uh, the new bill, now an act, going through, you know gone through Parliament, which gives us some slightly stronger powers, both in, in, okay. in particular in relation to what I. Would call assemblies and we are pleased with that and it will help it's not quite as much as we would like but it will help you'll be aware of the demonstration i imagine of some elderly gurkhas outside number 10 down i absolutely Street, right? am uh, and you may not be aware but your officers have taken away the awning under which these uh, old soldiers were afforded some protection from the sun and indeed from the rain it is apparently an offense to have an awning how come the Met removes elderly Gurkhas awnings, but you can put a yellow boat in Oxford Circus and skateboard and sing with demonstrators? Why would that be, Commissioner? So we we have to deal with each protest as as they are um, sort of manifest. So if the Gurkhas wanted to skateboard. No, let me talk. Let me talk. Let me talk about the Gurkhas, if I may, Nick. Go ahead. Of course, 
um, I, as you know, as much as anybody, have massive respect for the Gurkhas. We have ex-Gurkhas in the Met. Uh, I know Gurkhas. I have family who've, who've who've served in the Gurkha Regiment. I have a massive amount of respect for the Gurkhas. Um, they ha- there has been a protest in Whitehall for some considerable time now, uh, in an area where people can have. Uh, a kind of static protest it's 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 allowed albeit there's a lot of competition to be in there um and they have been there for a number of days the bylaws however and i think you can understand why do not allow for uh you know a, what might become a permanent encampment but they allow for Part, in Oxford service. partly partly because people uh, other people want to come in there. We don't want... Uh, well, the law is suggesting that people shouldn't be able to just stay there forever op- opposite Downing Street, which mm-hmm. some people would. And therefore, after a considerable uh, you know, warning and conversation, uh, the police did, my officers did go in and, and say, I'm afraid these are, these, this, this awning is going to have to come down. I think if you watch the video, as ever, um, you know, public order policing, as we would call it, is complicated. You don't always please people. I know that. Um, but the officers, square, the officers have the officers that you see on the video are extremely polite. Understand. They're extremely you, professional, and they're doing their I'm job. Not, you can pitch a tent if you're XR and sleep on Victoria Bridge or whatever, but you can't if you're an old boy, a Gurkha, go under an awning. Well, actually, that's not a fair. That's not a fair comparison. Well, that's what's there are places. Yes, there are places in London where, the, but that bylaw does not exist. And, and, and officers will um, sing and skateboard with XR and take away Gurkha's covering. So you are going. We we police, as you well know. Uh, this last weekend we had 18 protests. There are more this weekend. We police hundreds and hundreds and hundreds every year. You're going back two years to an operation in which tens and tens of thousands of officers were deployed to one incident. Right. Of course, we try to act professionally on all occasions. We don't always get it totally right. You've heard my comment on the skateboarding in the past. Okay. Um, but I, I, I do we, think they've done the right thing, I'm sorry to say, with, with this particular just, instance. Just before we come to the next caller, which is Sam, on the idea of knife crime, we've, we've mentioned Wembley, we've mentioned the Extinction Rebellion. This featured in an editorial in The Times, which you might have seen last month. They talk about the charge seat against the Met, a long one. They mention the handling of the Sarah Everard protest, the Daniel Morgan murder investigation. And it concludes that this is The Times, which is not really given to journalistic hyperbole. For this, Dame Cressida Dick, the commissioner who we report today is hoping to continue in her job after her contract expires in April must take ultimate responsibility. The violence shamed Britain. It should shame the Met too. Are they right? I do. Re- I do take responsibility for what happens in the Met uh, and in terms of uh, you know our responsibilities as in, in the time that I've been commissioner. Uh, of course, but that is absolutely right. And ten years ago, when one of your distinguished predecessors, Sir Paul Stevenson, stood down after he was, in many eyes, unfairly caught up in the hacking scandal, he said. When I become the story, it's time to leave. You're the story now, Dame Cressida. You're in the papers again today about your tenure. It's time to leave, isn't it? So I love my job. I'm concentrating on my job. I will work as hard as I possibly can and do the best possible job for until my last day. That's what I'm focused on. I'm not focused on gossip in the papers. I do regard myself as an honourable person. I do, of course, think about, you know, how are we getting on? I see the fantastic results that we're achieving. I see some wonderful things every day. I know we're making progress in some key areas. Of course, some things have happened during my commissionership, as they do during every commissionership in this enormous city and 44,000 people that I regret, and some of them I deeply regret. Uh, but I'm focused on my job now. 44,000 people that you regret? Sorry, the victims yeah. of crime, is that? What were no, there are 44,000 people in the Met, I and, and we police ten, a city of I nearly see. 10 million. And are and you going to be it, sitting there. opposite me after next April? Um, I have no idea whether I will well, or I won't be. You must what No, I, I, well, I think you would probably agree. Even you, Nick, would agree that that is a private matter. There has been no conversation with the Home Secretary, no conversation with the Mayor. When that time comes to have that conversation, I will, of course, speak to my family uh, and have we, we will an, all decide what is for the best. Would you want to stay in post? Can I ask you that? I, I've already told you I, uh, all I can tell you. Are there which challenges is, that you want to... You I, haven't even got sleeves to roll up because you're wearing a short sleeve. <laughs> I <laughs> love my job. Do you I'm want to very, stay in post? I, I love my job. I am very, very focused on my job. Uh, and in due course, people will know Would you rather get what a is happening today and watch or the not. No, I've got a wonderful day ahead of me today. I'm no, going to see, I'm going to see a, a, a crime reduction program. My officers right. are leading. I'm meeting some victims of crime. Okay. Uh, I'm out and about with a dog unit tonight. And you haven't decided yet. 
The conversations have not taken place. Sam's in Newham. Sam, you're on the radio. What question would you put to the Commissioner? Good morning. Sam? Hello? Yes, Sam, go ahead. You're on the radio. So what you say is going to be heard. What's your question, please, to Dame Cressida? So I live in an area where I witness a lot of knife crime and violence, mostly on a daily basis. And even my own son, he's been stabbed before. The Met Police claim to be cracking down on violence and knife crime. But reality could not be more different for people like me. You claim to have strategies, but when will we see results? All right, let's put that. I have to say, Dame Cressida, and you'll know, Commissioner, these figures probably better than I. There have been 23 now uh, fatalities due to knife crime. Sadly, it looks as though it could be on track, possibly for the worst figure in some 20 years. And you have told me in the past that this was your number one priority. So violence on the streets, uh, Sam, and that, of course, includes knife crime, and particularly as it affects young people, is my, our, number one priority. And if you asked anybody in the Met, they would tell you that. Uh, and we are straining every sinew uh, to uh, reduce n all violent crime on the streets, and in particular knife crime, and bring people to justice. Uh, Sam, I would like, if you don't mind, to talk to you outside, to hear a little bit more of your experience. Um, but what I can say is... Uh, we are seeing some very considerable results. Uh, if you look at the crime of robbery, uh, reductions last year, reductions the year before, if you look at knife crime, likewise, if you look at stabbings non-fatal of young people under but, 25, huge reductions. If you look at gun crime, huge reductions this year. Uh, I'm going to come back to fatal stabbings, if I might. Please. Um, if you look at gun crime, uh, January to July last year, as an example... Uh, this, sorry, this current year, we've got the lowest level of discharges of firearms in the last 10 years. That is a very big reduction. You see what we're doing, or some of you do, maybe, maybe Sam, you know, I live and breathe this, perhaps I don't expect you to, uh, but, you know, we've closed 500 uh, county lines. We've arrested over 1,000 line holders for county lines. That's highly associated with violence. Uh, last week, we had loads of drug seizures, 182 kilograms of cocaine in one seizure. You heard it here first, Nick. I'd like um, a bit more detail, whatever you can. Give me that number figure again, Commissioner. 182 kilograms of cocaine in was one. seized in one seizure. That's one of the biggest seizures. When was And of this? course, that was last week, Sorry, early last and, week. And where might I ask? Uh, well, actually, it was a joint operation, <coughs> but people uh, and people have been charged. So I need to be careful. Oh, okay. But the arrest you can't took, even tell me the, the arrest took place in Coventry, but uh, it was a, a Met operation supported by our colleagues uh, in the Midlands. Um, we've just one of my units, our violence suppression units, which work locally in all our boroughs, have had over seven thousand uh, arrests for violent crime. So in all the major categories. Uh, you've seen reductions and record amounts of knives, guns and drugs and cash seized. I think those are genuine results. But let me come, come back yes. to the fatal homicides and the phenomenon that we're seeing of young people uh, carrying knives, which I think is what you're referring to, Sam. I'm really sorry to hear that your son has been stabbed. Um, only earlier this week I'm, I met with a young with a mum who has lost her son uh, to, uh, to, to a knife crime. Uh, and this year, as Nick has said, we've had, uh, I think, 23 teenagers killed yes, uh, with knives. And what we are seeing is that in these homicides, and indeed some of the homicides of older people, there's an ever greater concentration of younger people, teenagers, who are carrying knives. And all too often, you will see an, a phenomenon where there's three or four on one side having a fight with three or four on the other side and they're carrying knives. So there's a huge amount for all of us in our city to do about that. It's a horrible phenomenon. I regret it. What you can see is more money going into diversion programmes. You can see us out on the streets more. We're growing. Uh, we target this this crime more than anything else. Okay. Uh, you, can, you can see us smashing up gangs at an increased rate. I, I could go on. Uh, um, Sam, I would like to talk to you okay. because you may have other ideas of what we Sam, should be doing. Sam, if you could kindly just stay on the line. One of my colleagues will take your details, which will then be passed on to one of them. And I know from past experience a conversation will take place. So, Sam, rest assured you're not being brushed off by any way, shape or form. Jackson, coming to you for your question. Just come back to one thing. I mentioned the article uh, from The Times, which was quite critical of you and indeed of The Met. It mentioned Operation Midland. In, in the wake of that, can you clarify what's happened with The Met's Believe the Victim policy? Yes, I mean, broadly speaking, and this is exactly what I said when I first came on to your show four and a half years ago, um, Nick, which is that uh, if somebody 
comes to us with uh, an allegation of crime, let's say in this case uh, an allegation of a historic sexual offence, then we will, of course, listen to them. We will listen to them with, you know, empathy and, and, and we will have an open mind and we will record their crime. From that moment on, we will, again, treat them with respect and dignity, but we are investigators and we will have a, 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 an open mind uh, and we will investigate and mm. go where the evidence takes us. So historical sexual crime, what investigation is taking place into the allegations from Virginia Roberts concerning Prince Andrew? So, is she to be believed? So I'm not, I'm not going to talk about individuals, but what I can say is that uh, I think what you're referring to is associated with uh, Jeffrey Epstein, who I will talk about since he is uh, deceased. Uh, and the position there is that we have uh, had uh, more than one allegation in, uh, that is connected with Mr Epstein. Uh, and we have uh, reviewed those, assessed those, uh, and we have not uh, opened um, an investigation. If, why would that well, be? If, it, if there are reports of girls, underage girls, being trafficked to London for sex with the Duke of York, isn't that something so that we, we want to look what at? So what we will look at is, is there evidence of a crime? This is what we have looked at. Is there evidence of a crime? Are, we, are we in the right jurisdiction? Sorry, is this the right jurisdiction for this to be dealt with? And is the person against whom the crime is alleged still alive. Those are the three things that we do look at and we have looked at in these cases. And we have concluded that there is no investigation for us to open and we haven't. We have taken advice from the Crown Prosecution Service uh, and I am clear that that was, and it's been reviewed twice, the right decision. I'm aware that currently uh, there is a lot more commentary in the media and um, a uh, apparent uh, civil court case going yeah. on in America. Well, it's not apparent, it's, it's and, fact, yeah. w- and we will, of course, again, review our position. So as a result but of I'm, what's happened I, in New we, York, you're we, We'll be looking it. at the position, of course we will. But at the moment, there is no, uh, in, there is no investigation. Right. Uh, have you seen the testimony or notes from the Duke of York's Royal Protection Team pertaining to the night of the allegation he strenuously denies what took place in a London apartment. So I really am not going to comment any further, Nick. Someone's seen those notes. I'm not going to comment any further. Is he above the law, the Duke of York? No one is above the law. So you're reviewing this case? In the, absolutely. It's been reviewed twice before. We've worked closely with the CPS. Uh, we are, of course, open to working with authorities from overseas. Uh, we will give them every assistance if they want to, if they if they ask us for anything uh, within the law, obviously. And as a result, uh, of New York. and yep. as a result of what's going on, right. uh, I've asked my team to have another look at uh, the material. Okay. No one is above the law. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson in Dagenham. You're through to Commissioner. Go ahead. Good hello, morning. Com- hello, Commissioner. Uh, a former football player um, died in police custody, and he had his head kicked in by a police officer. Daniel Morgan, after Daniel Morgan report, said that too many people are dying in police custody. I have yet to hear of you making any reports as to how that is going to be minimised. And to that degree, I say, because policing is by public consent, you do not have the consent of the public to have another term. Well, let, I, mean, I need to point out there are eight and a half million people in London. It's not necessarily all put down to there. Uh, let's get this, some of these comments to Commissioner. So I think you are referring um, to the, the, you know, the terrible case in uh, the sort of West Midlands region. Um, and so the case well, you're referring to, Morgan yes, case, if, in the first instance, yeah, yeah, that, sorry, that yeah. of course is not a metropolitan police officer, uh, but it is somebody who has been found guilty of a serious crime this is the uh, after the, a the trial. Sad killing of the Aston Absolutely. A horrible, horrible, horrible uh, not, set of circumstances. Met officer. Thank you. Okay. Not, not a met officer. But I can move officer. you to Daniel Morgan. Well, what I can, what I can say in answer to the question is we have actually, if you look uh, nationally, seen a considerable reduction uh, in the number of people who have died in uh, police custody. Uh, and that is because we have put in place a huge number of extra safety measures. If you're thinking, for example, of the custody environment uh, where we detain people, um, we have you know thousands and thousands of people detained, over 500 a day in London. 
a huge proportion of them have a very, uh, you know, have are of ill health and uh, may have mental health problems. Some of them may be drunk, they may be on drugs. They have lots of health needs in many instances. Uh, and uh, we have, I think, actually, an extraordinarily low level of deaths in police custody. Each one is a tragedy. Each one is investigated very, very carefully. And to my knowledge, uh, the year that I, that I can remember is not the last year, the one before, because I don't think the figures are published. Of the, of the people who did die in our custody, there was no criticism of the police in any instance. They died of, of health problems. Now, what are we doing to try to make sure that in violent situations, our officers are as well trained as possible and have the ability to keep everybody safe? Well, that is very close to my heart, and we are constantly improving their safety training and also improving their ability to handle conflict, reduce... Uh, you know, tension between parties uh, and so forth. Uh, it's a difficult job being a police officer. Um, you, you know, you deal with unexpected, risky situations, people who present in a way that you have no idea what they're going to do next. Uh, you know my officers get assaulted. I had another one assaulted in a horrible thing last night. Uh, I had uh, some appalling what is stabbing. What condition? So he, I think, is all right, but he's got a big gash on his forehead, having Sorry, tried to arrest somebody uh, who turned out later to have both a Rambo knife and a CS spray in their bag. I had two officers at the weekend. Can you tell me where that happened? Uh, yes, that was in West, uh, in, 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 not very far from here, in Westminster, central London. Right. And, uh, and at the weekend, detained, yes, he's been so arrested for detail, right? uh, grievous bodily harm. At the weekend, I had two officers... Uh, repeatedly stabbed with a pen knife. Thank God they had their met vests on because I think it could have been, you know, possibly even a tragedy. So if they hadn't, again, where um, was that in the met? Area? So that was uh, in uh, further north in London, and at the same time, you you may have heard of it, where a social worker was also stabbed. Yeah. The officers are incredibly brave. Can't say too much more. A man has been charged with attempted murder and it's GBH. So so I regret every single person who gets hurt when the police are arresting people. I, I completely, uh, you know, condemn what happened you back see. in in uh, you know in the Dalian Atkinson case. Horrible, of okay. course. This leads me because I know I've only got a minute for you because I know you. you have a high level meeting. But this leads me so compare and contrast. You have the bravery you've just expected yeah. expressed with those officers, but. Coming back to Daniel Morgan, Baroness O'Lone had some comments about the recruitment of some of your police officers. And, and we look at recent incidents such as Ruby Begum, who is a, one of your officers allegedly responsible for some racist tweets. Ben Hannam, who is a former probationary officer who's actually been jailed for being a member of a neo-Nazi group. And Wayne Cousins, where you expressed heartfelt grief and sympathy and the shockwaves through the Met. But it would appear that he could have been picked up, this was the man responsible for the murder of Sarah Everard, for a sexual crime in Kent some six years prior to his offence. Are you doing enough to vet the officers in the Met? How come these bad apples, so many bad apples, are getting through, Commissioner? Mm. Well, <clears throat> I think vetting is very important, obviously. Uh, we have um, a strong vetting capability. Uh, I welcome the fact that the Inspectorate of Constabulary are coming back soon to look at our vetting capability and our anti-corruption work, actually. Uh, I've asked them to, and I'm looking forward to them doing that. Uh, but we exceed the national standards set for policing uh, in vetting. We do a number of extra things uh, in various different ways. Um, vetting won't always find you know everything out about people if i Respect if, if i talk media if i talk well if i talk about that first of, officer that you've referred really to um i should say i mean people may not know about this this matter but you know this the the allegations are serious of course and there's no room in my service for people who in any forum whether it's social media or otherwise express uh, racist or homophobic views should point out it appears and it's early stages uh, this was uh, before this officer joined so you're going to say to me nick well why didn't it come up in vetting well i can say that nationally and locally in the met at the point that that officer joined we did not examine that wasn't part of our vetting process so that would be it picked would, up now it, looking at social media is absolutely part of our vetting process now. Uh, so vetting won't won't stop everything. It is important. Uh, we are reviewing it, and we're going to have an, an, an external inspection into our vetting capability.
I'm being waved at through a screen. You. I think you've got to go, and I've taken you over time. Good luck. Thank uh, good you luck very to your colleagues much. through August uh, to those demonstrations. Extinction Rebellion. Dame Thank, Thank, you Thank you very you much time. indeed. This is Thank LBC. You. Eight, you must go. Eight thirty-three. News time. Simon Comey. The Met Police uh, Commissioner has told LBC the force will again review allegations against the late convicted paedophile Jeffrey Epstein, having so far decided not to open an investigation. Speaking on call, the Commissioner Dame Cressida Dick also said she is very disappointed that Extinction Rebellion plans to protest in. London again for two weeks later this month. She also defended the policing of the Euro 2020 final at Wembley and she said there have been no...